Hey everybody, Zach again, NutriTorah.com, coming in and making a video for you today. Uh, we're back to on-point preparedness. I want to do some apologetics today. Now, this is a channel that I have talked about and um, piecemealed some of their videos before in the past, and I think you guys pretty much enjoyed those. So there was another video that was sent to me where I was mentioned in the video, and I said, oh, okay. And I just began to watch it while I was casually doing something else one day, and I was listening to it in the background. And he mentioned me in the video, and I was like, oh, this is easy. I can really do some fun stuff with this. And the interviewer, the, he's interviewing somebody uh, on the video that brings up the old tired arguments that we've all addressed on this channel many times before, Acts chapter 15, Matthew 5, 17 through 19. Never getting to verse 19, by the way. They always skip that one <laughs> on Matthew chapter 5. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 19, go read it. Um, Anyway, they always skip that verse. They always go through 17 and 18 and do a little word dance to try to get around that. But today, we're going to talk about some of the things he said in the video and uh, just go through the clips and have some fun with it. Let's go ahead and get into our first clip. I'm going to talk about the dangers of Hebrew roots or Torah observance, Torah obedience. Basically, this movement that's gaining a lot of steam, which says we're saved by grace through faith. However, uh, if you're truly saved, the good fruit that comes from that salvation is that you'll want to obey the law of Moses, that you'll want to walk as Jesus walked. Myself personally, uh, I, I've been rebuking this movement for at least, I think it's been like four, maybe five, five years now, I think ever since 2018. And Year by year, I'm continuing to see it spread. I'm hearing from my friends that even in college campuses and things like that, their Christians are finding other Christians that are starting to obey the Torah. Okay, a lot to unpack here. Um, let me just first begin by walking as Jesus walked. If you are really saved, you'll want to obey the law of Moses. I agree. I will agree because sin has always, always been transgression of the law. You see, you know, we're into preparedness. You know, me and On Point Preparedness, we love preparedness. And we understand that the biggest thing you can be prepped on is your salvation. One day you understand you're going to be sitting at the judgment. And we know from scripture, he's going to tell many, it says many on that day, many, he will say on that day, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, you worker of lawlessness. I never knew you. Now, that's kind of scary for me. I don't want to be one of iniquity. I don't want to be one of lawlessness. And I so, so I go back and I began to you know, read the Bible as I'm seeing a world that's just enveloped by sin today. And I'm asking what is right and what is wrong. And the only place you're going to find that is back in the Torah where it tells you what is right and what is wrong and how you walk according to how is right. How did our Messiah walk when he was on this earth? And he's referring to 1 John 2.6. He that says he abides in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Well, how did he walk? He walked without sin. That's, that's that simple. He walked without sin. As you also are to try to walk. Now, are we perfect? No. But see, that's where grace catches us. That's where grace saves us. We have a heart to be obedient to un and understand that sin is always, always transgression of the law, 1 John 3, 4. And so once we understand what sin is, we can walk away from that. We can repent. We can turn, return back to the Father's ways and try to be obedient. After all, it says that is the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. <clears throat> but on point preparedness and many like him do not like the fact that you have to go back to the law of Moses. They feel they've been told their whole lives that this is hard, that this is something you can't do, that this is something that's it's a task that you can't possibly achieve. But it's not true. We know that the commandments are not burdensome. It even says so. For this is the love of God, meaning this is how we love God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. It's not hard. You have to choose whether or not you're going to obey because being obedient is the whole duty of man. <laughs> but they get hung up on certain verses like this. 
John chapter 1, verse 17, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yeshua Messiah, or Jesus Christ. And what they get hung up on here is that word, but. Uh, if you notice, in most of your Bibles, most of your Bibles, that word, but, is italicized, meaning it was added later. There is no but in your actual scripture. If you go back to the earliest manuscripts, there's no but there. So how that verse really reads is, For the law was given by Moses, grace and truth came by Yeshua Messiah. There's no contradictory, you know, there's no, there's no, you know, contradiction. There's no conflict here between Moses and Yeshua Messiah. Moses, by Moses came the word of God, the commandments, and Yeshua kept the commandments. And what is truth? Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy Torah, thy law, is the truth. That's what the truth is. So it just takes a little bit of reading comprehension to understand why it is so many people and why this movement is growing. It's not that hard because, again, and he mentions this even in the video, that our our world and even the church itself today, the modern Christian church, is so full of, of sin and so full of gray areas that the people are left asking themselves what is right and what is wrong in this world that sin is ever increasing in. It's all around us. And that's one of the reasons I believe we're in the last days today, because <laughs> there's always been hard times. There's always been wars and earthquakes and famines and all of these crazy things that we're seeing in our world today, economic collapses. But what we're not, we've not seen throughout history and what we are seeing today is this overabundance, an outward celebration of sin, open rebellion against God, so much so that if you don't participate in it, you get persecuted. See, that's that's not been seen throughout history. Even, was it, Hitler was a Lutheran or whatever, you know. <laughs> I mean, they, they, some of the worst people throughout history cling, clung to God in their doctrines and beliefs. But see, today, God is being thrown under the bus and openly, and people are doing exactly the opposite, everything the opposite of what God says. Um, I was um, in a supermarket the other day, and um, I could not believe this. I was in a supermarket the other day. I was checking out, and in front of me was a woman who had a mask on, which tells you she's a Democrat, and she was um, paying for her food, and she was checking out. She was buying cat food, all these bags of cat food. And if you like me, you've heard the news, cat food and dog food, is go, the prices of that stuff is going through the roof. And she had a bunch of it. And... Um, the lady in the counter who was checking out, she was very despondent. She didn't want to be there. You could tell she was like, oh, she was being a checker at, at the at the store. And she really didn't want to be there. And she really didn't want to get up and go to the, around the checkout counter and check out all of the, all of the bags of, you know, self-scan all of the bags of cat food. And she's like, how many you got there? She's like, well, I think I got this many, whatever. And she's like, I don't think I got them all. And you could tell that she didn't check them out. You can tell she didn't check them out. The woman who was buying it knew that the woman didn't check it out. And she knew she was stealing from the store and she was fine with it. And the lady who was checking out, the, wor the worker, knew she didn't get it all and she didn't care. They were basically a lot. She was too lazy to do her job and the woman was openly stealing from the store. Because <laughs> she knew she didn't pay for what. And, and the bill came through, and I heard the bill, and it wasn't near what all those bags of cat food would cost, plus all the other groceries she had. She was openly stealing. And the checkout lady, she was wearing a shirt with a big skull on it. What does the Bible say? Those who hate me love death. And death, not just on Halloween, is openly celebrated in our society, in every society today. Death is celebrated openly. And it's, it just tells me we're in these last days. And in these last days, when sin is just open and out there, not in the closet, not hidden in the shadows anymore, people are left asking what is right and what is wrong. And the only way you're going to find that is go back to the Torah and, and understand, okay, what, is the, what does the Bible say is right and wrong? The law, God's law, says what is right and what is wrong. That's where we're at today. Next clip. There's all these woes about food shortages and people getting prepared. I see a majority of the big Torah teachers on YouTube, a lot of them are all preppers as well. Yeah. And they either have separate prepper channels. I think like Zach Bauer is one. A lot of them are all preppers. And I think that's another snare, you know, that 
everyone's talking about getting ready for what's to come and you know people don't know that a lot of these channels that that say they're christian and they're warning people about the signs of the times and getting prepared and it all sounds good they're actually leading you into uh, you know false theology which is all very worrisome yeshua said my doctrine is not mine but his that sent me my doctrine is not mine but his that sent me and proverbs 4 2 says for I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my Torah, forsake ye not my law. It's good. It's a good doctrine. Psalms 19.7 says, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. It's not hard. It's not messed up. It's not wrong. It's perfect. And it converts the soul. Meaning those who accept Yeshua as our Messiah, who understand what sin is, they're going to want to abide by that law. And know that it's truth, know that it's perfect, and know, and by doing that, it converts the soul. By repenting and turning from evil ways to God's ways, you're converting your soul. See, that it's that simple. You know, John 3, 16, I've said it many times on my channel. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But if you read down verse 19, 20, and 21, it talks about the deeds the deeds of light or the deeds of darkness. You see, there's deeds. There's it, What you do matters. So yeah, there are people today, and it's growing. It's growing. Who understand in this world of sin we live in that there's got to be a way to find answers about what is actually right and what is wrong. There's got to be a way to have my moral compass be straight again. And the only way you do that, people have found, is go back to the Father, go back to God's law, and let him tell you what is right and what is wrong. Hope you enjoyed the video. Go home. Read your Bible. Thanks.